Let's talk about the tools you need when you get started sewing. First of all, you'll need tools for measuring, cutting, pinning, and various other things that help you in your sewing process. <laughs> so we'll start off with a sewing machine. You need a sewing machine, and it's also a good idea to have an iron and ironing board. You can get an iron and ironing board online pretty easily. Uh, and you can have a stand-up ironing board or a tabletop ironing board, whichever you prefer. I like to have a vessel to put my tools in, so let's start with cutting. At the sewing room, we use three kinds of scissors. We have fabric scissors. These are called bent shears, and we only cut fabric with them. We have paper scissors. Those are for cutting paper patterns, and I'll talk about what a pattern is a little bit later on, but for now, we will just talk about the tools. So we have our scissors, paper scissors, and then as a bonus, you could have what I call our clippy scissors, or scissors that you clip your threads with. These are also known as embroidery scissors, and they're great for clipping many different things in the sewing realm, which we will get to later, but it's a good idea to have a set of embroidery scissors as well. When it comes to measuring, we start by having a soft measuring tape. Easy to come by and so important to measure for measuring around the body to get your body measurements and also measuring fabric. Those can go in the, in the vessel that we have as well. We also have a two by 18 inch rule, flexible ruler, which is good for measuring and drawing rectangles on fabric. And additionally, it's good for adding seam allowance that you can do, you can mark your seam allowance with either a fabric soluble pen or we use friction pens, which are great for marking seam allowances because after they are ironed, the pen disappears. And it's great for the new sewer to have. And even for experienced sewers like me, it's good to have a way to mark things without it having a lasting effect on your garment. So back to measuring. I also like these tiny little rulers, which are good for little hands. This one's one by six inches, and it's also excellent for drawing your seam allowances in when you need to. Like I said before, we have friction pens for marking. We also have something called dressmaker's chalk, and this also comes off when you um, iron it. You don't want to use chalk that you use on a chalkboard. This is special chalk. It's like a waxy chalk and it's called dressmaker's chalk. Then I have, I always have in my toolbox, a chopstick. And as we come to different things where we're turning them inside out or poking out corners, the chopstick is great because you have both a blunt end and a sharper end. It's not too sharp but I like the pointy chopsticks, not the square ones. So that's a good tool to have. You'll also need a seam ripper, and that's for taking out stitches that you don't want. It's a fact of life. You'll need a seam ripper. I also have a plethora of safety pins on hand for drawing elastic through casings and um, waistbands and such. You can also use a bodkin, but safety pins work really great for this. I keep mine in a little plastic container in my toolbox. You'll also want some pins, and it is helpful to have a magnetic pin holder. I've made this one out of some pretty giant magnets that are inside. I'll show you what they look like. They're a little hard. So it's, it's a pretty big magnet with a metal plate behind it and an Altoid container. You can either make these or you can buy magnetic pin holders on their own. But pins are very important and you need a lot of them, especially when you're getting started. I also like to have tape because sometimes we tear things and we need to tape them back together. Another thing you might want to have on hand are some hand sewing needles, which differ from machine sewing needles. And you can tell the difference by the way they're shaped. Hand sewing needles come in a variety of sizes 
for a variety of uses. And they are cylindrical in shape with an eye on one end and a point on the other end. Uh, some, are, some of these big ones are used for embroidery. Um, and most of the smaller ones that you'll want when you do your hand sewing um, are sharp at the end. You don't want a blunt needle. That's usually only for embroidery or needlepoint. But sharp needles that are thin and about two inches long. Machine needles, in contrast, usually come in a package like this. And they have a flat back and a round front, and they're color-coded with stripes. So they come in and out of the shaft of the sewing machine, and they fit differently. It's not a good idea to try to do hand sewing with a machine needle, and you certainly can't use a hand sewing needle in your machine. I like to keep everything organized. We're just going to put that back. I have tins that say what everything is. Machine sewing needles. I also have a tin for my seam rippers. Um, I use all kinds of tins. I got those tins from Ikea and then I got this from tea that I drank. And it's quite a pretty tin and it will hold lots of things. So you can put your pens your scissors, your chopstick, your seam ripper. A lot of your tools can go right in there and just rest on the counter. And it's good to have them all in one centralized place so that you don't lose track of your materials. 